Hi, this is Tony Sagami for Uncommon Wisdom Daily. Guess where I'm at? I'm in Beijing, China, and this street is called Wang Fujing Street. It's one of the most famous streets in all of China. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of Asia. This is one of the primary retail shopping spots uh, of Beijing and extremely popular, as you can tell, by all the crowds. This street dates back to the 1400s, where it was one of the prime trading areas for people that came to Beijing, not only to uh, pay their respect to the emperor, but also to do trade and conduct business. And today, it's one of the most popular shopping spots in the world. It's estimated that upwards of one million people go up and down this street every day. Because of that exposure, uh, companies, retail companies, are dying to do business here, including lots of American ones. And what I want to do is give you a little tour of Wang Fujing Street today and show you how you can invest in China and get lots of China exposure with good old American companies so you don't have to open up a foreign brokerage account, nor do you have to uh, buy foreign stock. You are right here with, uh, with American companies. So I'm going to go behind the camera and, and give you a little uh, view of it. We'll walk down Wang Fujing Street together and take a look. You know, as I mentioned, this street goes back to the 1400s, and almost every store you can imagine is here, uh, both Chinese as well as American and other Western companies. And you can see the foot traffic is just humongous here. And at night, this turns into almost a mini Las Vegas as far as neon lights. It's just beautifully lit up and just a spectacular place to see. I'm going to walk over here a little bit toward this uh, mall, this little side department store. This is filled with all the high-end uh, luxury lines that you can think of. Uh, foreign ones, Hermes, Prada, Gucci, Rolex, you name it. But there's several American companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange in there, such as uh, L'Oreal Cosmetics uh, and Elizabeth Arden. And so those are companies you can invest in that are doing quite a bit of business over here. As a matter of fact, uh, L'Oreal is doing excellent business, as is Avon Products. Avon Products, by the way, has a, a Chinese CEO. Uh, also in there, you can't really see it, I don't want to walk away inside, is a Starbucks. They're all over around here, and they're generally quite full. Now let's go back to the main area. One thing I'm going to zoom in here is this little restaurant. You see this guy has a couple Coke products in his hand. Pepsi really hasn't done that good of a job uh, getting a foothold in China. It's definitely here, but Coca-Cola has been here the longest and definitely uh, is doing the most business. Now you have these department stores. Inside those department stores are all the famous American brands that you can think of. Uh, Abercrombie & Fitch, American Eagle, uh, as well as other popular brands uh, with the teenage kids. Uh, if, if Westerners, see Chinese just are loved with American products. If it's popular with American, Americans, they're gonna love it just as much. Now we're continuing to walk, and you can see it really is just an amazing place. You know, you can go back, it goes the other way too. You can see Rolex, Tudor, we're coming up to Nike Town. This Nike store is the highest grossing Nike store of all the retail chain, the retail stores that Nike owns. Uh, people, uh, the Chinese love Nike products. Uh, Adidas does real well here too. But Nike is certainly one of the top, it's as much as a fashion statement as it is in the US as a piece of athletic footwear. There you can see KFC. KFC is operated by Yum Brands, as, with, as in Pizza Hut. You know, there are over 3,500 KFCs in China, and they're opening them at the rate of one new KFC every 18 hours. So you can imagine the type of growth that Yum Brands is enjoying in China. As a matter of fact, over 50% of their sales come from outside of North America. Here we're coming up, you can see a big Gap store. Very popular over here. And again, another one of those huge department stores. And inside is not that much different than any American store. You find a lot of the same brands in there. Now you can take a look at this interesting little sign. 
It kind of looks like the McDonald's logo, but it's not. You know, China's not real strong in their, on their uh, pa trademark enforcement, so there's a lot of copyright problems here. Just ask Microsoft how they feel about pirated software. See that yellow sign for home ends? That's uh, kind of the Howard Johnson of China. And even though it's a Chinese stock, uh, it is listed on the NASDAQ. Uh, the ticker is H-M-I-N, home ends. Very successful hoteler. There you can see there's a McDonald's. It's kind of obscured by that Tag Hauer sign. But McDonald's is uh, very big in China. It has a 14% market share of the fast food market. Although I would tell you that uh, Yum Brands has a 40% market share. And here we're coming up a little toward the end of Wang Fujing Street. But as you can see, it's filled with consumers. Not so much tourists, you would find. You can see there's mainly Chinese shoppers here. And if they're a Chinese uh, yuppie or a chuppy and have some money to spend, this is one of the places they like to come to do it. Uh, I don't know if you can see it up high there. There's a Starbucks sign. Starbucks are very popular here. They're kind of interesting. Uh, it's a very popular place to take a date at night. And so Starbucks is able to kind of leverage their properties by using them and being very crowded and doing a lot of business at night when they're otherwise dead as doornails in the U.S. And we're coming to the end of Wang Fujing Street. And you can see across the street another high-end, super luxury retailer. Places that I don't shop. Take a look at that Nike post. You can see how Nike's advertising very heavily in China. Big brand. And it has nothing to do with business, but Wang Fujing Street is also known for its street food markets. I don't know if you can see them down there with all the red lanterns. They have almost every kind of uh, imaginable mystery meat you can think of. Deep fried starfish, scorpions on a stick, and all kinds of mystery meat uh, whose origins I have no idea. I think most of it would make a billy goat sick, but the Chinese love it. And if you have an iron stomach, you might want to try it too. But that's your little tour of Wang Fujing. And as you can see, it's pretty easy to get some American exposure and get some Chinese exposure with American stocks. So uh, China is one place that you want to make part of your portfolio. And it is easy to do without ever leaving the comfort of your U.S. brokerage firm. This is Tony Sagami for Uncommon Wisdom Daily. Thanks for watching.